Meteorologist Mike Griffith here. Welcome to our Carolina Weather Authority YouTube channel. Uh, before we get started, just uh, politely ask that you uh, hit that subscribe button below. It's free and it helps you keep up to date with all of our latest videos on current storms, severe outbreaks, hurricanes, snows, floods, storms, you name it. Make sure you also give this uh, video a like also. And uh, leave, us, leave us a comment uh, that says... Uh, do you do you think June has been uh, cool or hot so far compared to normal? Uh, so let us know how you think uh, the month of June has been so far. It's not even summer yet, believe it or not, even though uh, everything seems to be so drawn out due to the coronavirus pandemic. I mean, uh, you know, it seems like March was like almost a year ago. It just makes time seem uh, go by a lot slower. Anyway, we're looking at a little bit of a, uh, uh, I'm not going to say so much a pattern shakeup, uh, but just stuff coming down the uh, the pipeline. Here, this is the uh, map at uh, about 18,000 feet in the atmosphere. So this is just below the uh, the main jet stream. And we are cooler and drier than usual right now uh, this weekend. It's the uh, 13th of June. It's Saturday, uh, and it's about 1.33 p.m. here. So welcome. We're going to talk about the uh, long range here. We're going to go into the rest of this month and also the summer. So it looks like we're in a bit of a trough pattern here in the east, uh, which means cooler temperatures uh, compared to usual. And this is as we go into uh, Sunday. But there is something that we're watching coming here over the East Coast. Uh, this is a cutoff low that's going to start forming uh, on Sunday into Monday. And this is just going to kind of sit here and spin. At first, it's going to bring us lots of rain and showers, scattered stuff, maybe a rumble of thunder, uh, more rain at the beaches, unfortunately for them. Uh, so it's not going to be a real uh, great vacation time right now, between now and the start of summer anyway, at least. That cutoff low just seemingly sits over there all for much of next week all the way into tuesday the 16th or so doesn't really go anywhere just brings uh gray skies low clouds there could be some breaks in the sunshine as we get into later next week here in the southeast uh, but this uh, upper low cutoff low is going to be parked right on top of us could even be some random severe along the coastlines here of north and south carolina on certain given days but not all the time so this cutoff low uh, kind of just uh, dissipates as expected into next weekend, the 19th and the 20th. Uh, the jet stream uh, uh, still uh, well to our north, the upper level flow uh, well, to, well, to our, well to our north. So we don't expect any type of like um, major storms, but there could be some uh, scattered thunderstorms, uh, maybe even some severe as we go into the 20th and 21st, this 588 height contour right here. Uh, this is calculated uh, using physics and the science of meteorology. Typically, storms tend to follow these patterns right along here, uh, just to the north of these uh, height contours. So there could be something uh, that maybe uh, maybe next weekend or so, but it's still uh, way too early to tell with that. And it looks like uh, that line just kind of sits there. It looks like there's a upper level ridge that tries to build over the desert southwest here. It's going to be some, uh, probably some, uh, maybe some hundreds again, upper 90s here in the four corners. Uh, but for us here in the east coast, it's going to remain troughy. Uh, this is a, just kind of like a, a trough if you were to draw a line right here. So cooler than normal. It's not really expected to be uh, too hot as we head into summer. There's no sign of a big ridge or an upper-level heat wave at all as we head into uh, later this month, into the 22nd or so. That upper-level ridge over the desert southwest of Mexico is going to allow things to just remain seasonable here in the East Coast, if not even cool at times, uh, with some uh, random storms, some uh, mesoscale convective systems and NC MCSs that will roll through from west to east and possibly affect uh, the uh, the Carolinas and the southeast. Again, still remains trophy all the way into the 23rd uh, later this month. And it looks like uh, out west is where you're going to see all the action with the heat. Um, and it looks like this means, uh, so if it's going to be hot out here, typically what happens on the east coast is, is that it is uh, cooler than usual. And we're not going to see any type of pronounced heat wave. Uh, at least through the end of this month, it doesn't look like. However, we could be on the table again in the second half of this month for severe weather uh, that moves uh, from west to east. So, mesoscale complex uh, convective systems. 
Uh, these are not really what you want because they uh, take down a lot of trees and power lines over a big swath of area. So this is, again, heading into the 27th or so. Um, although typically you'd see those during big heat waves in the east, and I'm talking like 100 degrees for the high temperatures in, in Raleigh and Charlotte, uh, you know, D.C. Uh, but if we're not going to see those type of temperatures, then the fuel might not be there for these uh, massive scale convective systems uh, later this month. So we will just have to see about that. Well, let's take a look at the uh, longer range uh, climate forecast system for what it's worth. Uh, this is a model that uh, goes well more out into time, way more out into time. And there's our cutoff low there as we head into uh, next week, like the Monday, Tuesday, 16th, 17th, uh, into the 18th. And that upper low kind of takes a hike. Still looks like uh, no real heat wave here in the east in the 21st or so. Uh, just everything kind of remains calm and mild. Uh, there's nothing really too much to write home about. Uh, the west is where it'll, it's going to be warm and hot and dry with wildfires most likely out there. However, the uh, jet stream takes a dip over much of the east uh, into the 24th. Uh, even a stronger kink in the uh, jet stream here will allow for some cooler temperatures still through the 26th or so this month. Again, this could be some kind of severe weather uh, event, uh, second half of this month, or we could see some more severe for sure uh, before the start of summer. Another low moves through uh, later this month, around the 28th or so possibly, although this is a, a very long-range model and it might not be 100% accurate, so it does have its caveats, but we aren't seeing that big open um, ridge of high pressure in the east so at least through the end of june into the start of july we're not expecting too much in the way of heat or record high temperatures we're expecting a uh, probably like a more seasonable uh, maybe even cooler than wetter pattern here in the east and uh, not really much more other than that i mean here we go uh, to start July 4th weekend. It looks like there could be some kind of high pressure, some kind of ridge that likes to set up here typically uh, this time of year. Uh, this is over to southeast, so it's going to be it's going to be hot and humid uh, for sure for July 4th, but that is nothing new for a city such as Charlotte, Raleigh, Wilmington, Charleston, Columbia, even Atlanta. And, uh, I mean, we could be seeing uh, some kind of a heat wave here on the 4th, which is actually... I'll take it because at least uh, if you are going to have any fireworks like in your backyard where they're legal or any displays, at least it looks like it's probably not going to be rained out this year on July 4th. So that's good. And that ridge just kind of sits there and builds. It's a southeast uh, ridge, maybe even kind of like a hybrid Bermuda high. Uh, this is really not unusual for this time of year for early july so uh once independence day weekend and beyond hits uh looks like we kind of do have a shift to an east coast summertime ridge nothing unusual about this i mean uh, 594 heights though this is pretty stinking hot so there could be some heat here uh, the first week of july but as far as climatology goes i mean this isn't completely unheard of i mean it doesn't even last it looks like that uh upper ridge might just like retrograde into this the western u.s back over the western part of the united states and once again bring us here in the east coast back into a trough pattern as we go into mid-july or so so it's not going to be any type of like persistent heat waves and like a hot overall summer we don't think so uh the one danger about this is that uh, when you have a weakness over the East Coast, it actually attracts any type of tropical system that would be in this area, even down in here, to come up like this, or come up like this, or even come up like this. So this whole area in here, Southeast Coast, is going to be uh, under a threat later this summer if this uh, pattern continues like this. This is ripe for a hurricane to just come right up the right up in the Wellington, right up the Cape Fear River. So. We're going to have to watch this overall pattern if it if it goes back to a trough after, you know, a mid-July ridge. And it's just going to open up this whole uh, this whole great corridor here for a hurricane to just come up and kind of track wherever it wants without even anything to kick it out to sea. And taking a look at the sea surface temperature anomalies, it is very warm right in through here off the uh, coast of Africa. I mean, there is some... Um, 
normal or even a core than normal temperatures uh, just to rough the uh, Cape Verde uh, islands or Cabo Verde, however you want to call these anymore. Uh, but over here towards the Caribbean, it's looking like it's going to be uh, uh, a warm, ripe fuel zone for any type of uh, storms that come into this area, even up into the Gulf. And uh, this is only going to get warmer as the uh, season continues. So again, the whole East Coast hurricane threat uh, definitely is there on the table. And here is the uh, temperature forecast for the month uh, for the rest of June. As we were saying, uh, cooler uh, than usual conditions here, uh, below normal, well below normal conditions for the Carolinas as we go into the 19th of June or so. And then from the 20th to the 26th, it uh, looks like there could be some residual, residual heat uh, left over, maybe along the coast or somewhere. But overall, uh, it's going to continue to be not really that hot, and it's going to be cooler than usual uh, through the uh, end of June, through the 26th or so. Uh, so we're from now through the 19th and then all the way up until the 26th, uh, we're not looking at any type of sustained heat. Uh, so this will be great for your energy bills. And uh, let's take a look uh, even a little bit further into the future as we uh, look at the uh, precipitation outlook. So it is looking wet. And that's the only thing uh, through uh, the end of June and through the early July. So we are looking at a little bit more than usual uh, rainfall here for the Carolinas and uh, Virginia. Um, it, it, this could be from just uh, low pressure systems or from tropical systems or from both as we go from the 27th uh, into the 3rd of July and also the July 4th, Independence Day weekend, all the way into the, the 10th or so. So uh, with the cooler weather, could be coming, uh, could come precipitation, but it's not going to be there the whole time, the rain that is. It's going to be off and on if it does actually happen due to uh, cooler temperatures being showing up here. Uh, so as we go into the uh, 3rd of July, uh, again, there is a possibility of some increasing heat as we go into uh, the July 4th or so, uh, but it's looking like we're just going to be seasonable from the end of June all the way into the Independence Day weekend. Nothing really uh, too crazy, uh, just normal temperatures. So again, nothing like 100 degrees or anything like that. Uh, but as we head from July 4th into July 10th, again, we, as we were saying, there is that chance of uh, a warm up and maybe even a mini heat wave a few days above 90 degrees or so. Uh, but really, other than that, uh, we're not thinking it's going to be an exhausting um, overall uh, crazy, crazy hot summer. Anyway, meteorologist Mike Everett for Carolina Weather Authority. Please, if you have not already, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It helps us. It helps you stay up to date with all of our forecasts and helps us grow our YouTube channel also. We need to get to 1,000 subscribers, so if you help us get there, um, we will all grow together, and we will all be able to bring you uh, much uh, detailed information, videos, and even this uh, kind of uh, semi-TV station now that we have going on with me and Josh. Definitely take a look at Josh's videos also, as he's a great forecaster, and he's the lead forecaster right now. And uh, thank you so much for watching this. Uh, give us a like, and don't forget to comment below if you think that June has been either above or below normal temperature-wise uh, so far this year. Share this video if you like it with your friends. Get them to subscribe also. Uh, again, uh, we're just uh, trying to grow this new uh, YouTube channel as quickly as possible before hurricane season uh, gets to be in full swing. Also, uh, check out our uh, website for our latest articles. Uh, as you will see, there's all kinds of uh, goodies on here. That's not where I wanted to go. Uh, <sighs> there you go. Okay, that's the Facebook page, and we're going to be looking at, oh, okay. There we go. Okay, and we have all kinds of uh, articles here on this page, all kinds of uh, goodies to look at. Uh, so make sure that you, for sure, um, take a look at all these uh, uh, different types of uh, forecasts that we have um, over here for um, uh, what our, our, uh, website. Uh, thanks a lot for watching everybody and make sure that you also check out these as well. Have a great one and we'll update you soon.